Formula One simulators are normally well and truly off limits. I've come to Worth Research in Bicester, headquarters of Virgin Racing, and today we're going to take a bit of a look. It says here, no access for unauthorised persons, but today we are authorised. Let's go in and have a look. So you can see the Worth Research simulator. At the moment, it's doing a lap of the Hungaro ring, one of the bumpier circuits on the Formula One calendar. Now, simulators are used mainly for two purposes. The first one is driver training. If a driver hasn't been to a circuit, he can come on one of these things and familiarise himself. Places like Korea, for example, a circuit none of the Formula One drivers have been around, and both of the Virgin Racing drivers will come here and do at least two whole Grand Prix distances before they even get off the plane in Seoul. But increasingly, Formula One teams are using simulators to simulate new technology on the cars. If they have an aerodynamic update or a new suspension update, they can try it out on this amazing machine. And they're so sensitive that the drivers can feel the difference. It means they can get very, very close to the setup they're going to need at the racetrack before they even get there. Well, I am sitting in the control room now with John Lamerton. John, how accurate are these things nowadays? Uh, they're very accurate now, uh, especially when uh, we're working closely with a, a customer like uh, Virgin Racing, where uh, they give us lots of information on the cars, so we can, we can really set up the car in the virtual world very accurately, and uh, that means that the drivers can come in, they can feel small setup changes to if you're changing like a wing setting or a uh, spring setting, they, they can feel the difference and say where to progress from there. We, we like to make their time in here as close as possible to the racetrack. So someone like Andy, who's a, an engineer, who obviously does quite a lot of test driving, I mean, is he as quick as Fernando Alonso or Timo Glock? I mean, <laughs> is he a great lost talent of Formula One? Or? Fernando Alonso is, is certainly someone special. He's never going to approach that kind of pace, but he, do, he does do very good competitive lap times. Uh, it's even compared to some racing drivers we do see in here. Having said that, it, he hasn't got the experience that any driver that's come up through the lower rankings has. When you have Formula One drivers in here, particularly your own drivers like Glock and, uh, and Degrassi and what have you, can you actually see what makes them so quick then? When yeah, you... it's an interesting experience when you get different drivers in here, uh, especially young drivers as well. Um, when you see, you can see straight away the ones that are going to make it. Uh, you can see that they're straight doing consistent lap times and you see them just uh, chipping off the tenths of a second very quickly. Especially uh, when you get, see the F1 drivers come in, they're, they're often straight on the pace. Although not all, but, but the majority are on the pace very quickly. Fantastic. Thanks for your time. Okay.